So, uh, Adrian, uh, we will do a test. Okay, hold on a second. I will put the system online. The gentleman you are hearing here, now here, is, okay, we're ready. is Adrian Sinclair. He is operating in Buenos Aires, Argentina. So, first question. Hello, my name is Stephanie. Do you sweat in space? What happens with the dirty laundry? Over. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Popular you can toss that here. So, uh, I'm calling Adrian. Adrian, uh, how many minutes do we still have? Ten minutes? Yeah, about uh, 10 or 11 minutes for me. 10 or 11 minutes for you, all right. Okay, well, uh, we will uh, get on with preparations. Let us say that from now on, we are in the official event, starting it now. So, students, ladies and gentlemen, now please forget that what we are doing today is like everything which is done by the amateur radio service and experiment and an experiment you can never know uh, if it is successful or not until it's over so let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that everything will go as well anyone says this is any one cgp calling over Thank you, Stephanie. That's a pretty good question. The, uh, we did put space to begin hot, or like what we're exercising, we sweat naturally, of course. And dirty laundry, we can't wash because we don't have a washing machine. What we end up doing is we stick them in the progress and they uh, burn up with the progress we enter. Yeah. Hi, my name is Matilda. Do you do special exercises or eat specific food in order to maintain your physical condition during your travel in space? Over. Education? Can he be treated like on Earth, for example, injections? Over. Great question. We are very fortunate on this flight to actually have a, a medical doctor. He's a Russian medical doctor. Um, but also we have uh, people who are trained with true medical skills. Uh, for instance, I've been working with my watch in the emergency room. We have a tiny emergency room here on board. So yes, we can treat with the sutures, with the uh, injections, medicine. Hello, I'm Benedict. Have your experiments had any results that are relevant for us on Earth? Which effects do they have on our daily life? Over. We have uh, many experiments going on, and so yes, I can answer something. For instance, cell phones, you know, the research that uh, we've been doing in space, fire uh, smoke detectors and in homes have come out of research that we've done in space. So we're also doing things like pure uh, research for cancer and understanding how the cancer cells develop. And we're also doing at least the correct medicine, like those kinds of diseases. We also do combustion research. We can burn pure flames up here without the effect of gravity and understand the combustion process, which helps us build better engines that are cleaner and more efficient. Hello, I'm Katerina. How do you navigate in space? How can you reach the ice as precisely with the space shuttle? Over. Um, now, wait a minute. You were very broken in your, in your uh, transmission. I had a lot of noise, but I think you're asking about navigating in space and the 
possible to use our computers on board to tell exactly where we are, both uh, over the Earth as well as how high and how fast we're moving. As a result of that, we have what's called our space vector, our location and our speed, and we can predict where we're going to be in a future time, and that's how the space shuttle links up with us at a future time and future location. Hello, I'm Jonathan. Do you have more fear in space than on Earth? Over. Uh, Jonathan, no sir, not really. We, we are mostly have a lot of amazement and wonder just looking out the window at the Earth. Uh, there's not much fear. We train, we're very well trained, and if we have a part of the team, we do. Thank you for your questions. All right, Timothy, this is Gaston Batel, Jessica November 4, Willie Fox operating over here in the European Parliament and we are very very grateful to you for your kindly answering all those questions and first of all for you here is a huge applause. Mr. Bertels, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear guests and colleagues, my name is Knut Fleckenstein and uh, my colleague Birgit Zippel asked me to welcome you tonight for this exceptional event in the European Parliament. In the context of this exhibition, European Amateur Radio Benefiting Society. And it's a great pleasure uh, for me to do so. Tonight, very a very special event is taking place and I'm very happy to welcome three guests, especially the astronauts and cosmonaut Frank de Winne, Roman Romanenko and Robert Sask. Welcome here in the Parliament. All three were members of a long-term Since 2001. 530 Aries school contacts have been performed. The latest one two hours ago from this very place. During your recent expedition, Frank and Bob and Roman, you have conducted many such school contacts, fostering the interest of students for science, technology, engineering, and math. The so important STEM studies needed for the future of humanity. In the Columbus module, amateur radio equipment will soon be installed and in collaboration with the European Space Agency, ARIS is planning the installation in the near future of digital amateur television. When this will be operational, Students will not only hear the astronauts, but also see them. It will be possible for students to imagine microgravity experiments. And an astronaut can perform them and show them during the few minutes of an Irish school contact. Some students will build their careers on space exploration. Some of you, perhaps. In line with the famous sentence, Earth is the cradle of humanity, but one doesn't stay in the cradle forever. It's also for that that we are so happy to do all these Aries contacts uh, from orbit. As uh, Gaston clearly mentioned, uh, for us it's a big psychological support to be able to talk to all the school kids, to get all their voices, to hear that they are happy that we can answer their questions. But I'm sure that also for them it's a very nice uh, challenge and it's a very nice opportunity to talk to people in space, uh, to learn more about technology, to learn you more just about... just launch that satellite now? Uh, no. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Deploy. Okay. Thank you. 